All right, I'm gonna cut some rocks. What I'll be cutting today is is these ones. It's what I've collected with Paulie in Northern New South Wales in the last video. There really isn't that much, but there's a few beauties. This is one that we popped out of the, a rock. Looks like some moss. I'll get to that at the end. Because there's not as many here, I'm gonna go see if I can find something real fun to cut from another video. Yeah, maybe we could do something with him. Oh gosh. He's just got a whole bunch of fun stuff going on. So out of that bunch, the ones from last week, I'm gonna do something with him. Cut into him and see what those little bubbles are doing. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that one either. Oh God help me. This is probably a good time to mention also that I will be polishing these as well, hopefully. Tell you what, leave it with me. <laughs> I'll see if, I've, uh, if I can do this without damaging them. I don't know, I just, my brain's not working with it right now, so I'm gonna have a little chill. I don't wanna rush any of these cuts. I think, um, I think for now today, I'm gonna leave that. I think that's safest for all the rocks. <laughs> all right, it's day two. I've got mega anxiety today, but I'm not gonna get it done if I just sit here and stress over it, so. For some reason this day, I was worried about the video and whether I was gonna be able to pull it off. And um, Carly said to me, just relax and enjoy your hobby. It's, it's something I gotta remember all the time. She's a smart girl. All right, now this one, the one we're all waiting for. At the end of the last video, I, we asked what people thought we should do with him. There were suggestions of tumbling, and then cutting if need be. The main gist of it is to try and see inside there. You can hold a, a light behind it, but unfortunately with that assault there, it's gonna make it a bit hard to shine through. So the aim of what I'm gonna try and do is to get the basalt off. There's a little chip here from extraction, so I'm just gonna clean that up on the blade. And then I think I'm going to use the polish pads to polish them. Got so a little bit of dishwashing detergent in there to, um, I forget why, but Kevin Nick said to do it. All right, they're done. 
I just realized though, I looked up and um, yeah, I think we got a storm coming. I'm gonna get this done before the uh, storm comes. It might get a bit windy, so I might have to change over to voiceover, but we'll just see. All right, the rocks, here they are. All right, the wind was too much, so I've got to do voiceovers. <laughs> this first one is a uh, Abnick Deloitte of Basalt. It, it actually has little tiny agates all the way through it, and um, I'm not sure what I was doing with the shape, but I, I just wanted to show all different sides and also leave some rough on top so you could see the nodules in their natural form. Amygdaloidal basalt is basically like an index of the different gemstones you can find in the creek or at least the minerals that are in that creek. This one for example has waterline agate and that area is known for waterline agate. It's even got little tiny crystals in there. I don't know what they are but they're pretty. They're probably one of my favorite stones to collect and polish, just because of all the different colors you can get in there. This guy is one of my favorite rocks I've ever collected. I think I was pretty lucky to have found him given all these cracks in here. I reckon a couple more tumbles down the creek and it probably would have been in pieces. He's a beautiful example though of some botrytals in there, those grape-like formations. It's a crystal growth habit and then it also has mammillaries on the inside. I just love it. It's, um, it's chalcedony and it's in this green basalt with little flecks of blue chalcedony in there as well. Not sure where that comes from, but the base polished up beautifully, even with some of the green taking a polish almost like Malachi. I'm not sure what it is, but he's beautiful. This next one is insane how well the polish came out on it. I was very surprised because when I first saw it, I thought it was a very porous rock, but on the inside, it wasn't. It was actually common opal with chalcedony running all the way through it. What was on the outside, and you can see it up the top here, was degraded opal. Just beautiful. When I say opal, I mean common opal. There's no flash in it. But with this guy, there's veins of chalcedony running through it and holding it together basically because it looks like all the opal's cracked and brecciated almost. I cut a base to it. I really wanted to leave that rough where the iron oxidization's there and the crystal growth habits there. I really think that rough makes the polish shine even brighter, if that makes sense. This one has like a, a casing of chalcedony. I, I wasn't able to remove the iron oxidization on the outside of this one, but it's okay because on the inside it's beautiful. Beautiful quartz crystals. They're polished better than what I thought. This one, when I picked it up from the creek, I just saw the top of it, which was a, a little bit of blue tinged chalcedony, but it's running through basalt. It went through there a lot more than what I thought. The top was a bit rough, so I just thought I'd polish that off and make it smooth because I felt that would show this a lot better. This beautiful plumes of minerals. I don't really know what they are, but I'm thinking the green is probably something to do with copper. You can see it in there, just like clouds of green and waterline as well, very light waterline. I basically just kept the shape of the stone and polished the chalcedony so you could see inside it. I love it, it's beautiful. Now this one's one of my favorite agates that I've ever found and I'm really glad that I was able to polish it up. It sat in my shed for a long time, but it's basically light blue agate lines with quartz crystals on the inside. It's just stunning. Uh, 
Okay, and here it is. Now I have to warn you, it's not blue, but it is a moss agate, I think. We'll see. I removed all the basalt off the back. There was green bits stuck in there, and where the green was is this blue chalcedony, so there is a little bit of blue in there. But it's what's on the other side that's amazing. I don't know what those things are called. They're just these big tunnels of the green inclusions and around them has blue chalcedony as well. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's moss agate, but this thing is just stunning. I actually don't even know how to explain it. So this one, this one's for Paulie, because if it wasn't for him being prepared, taking a hammer and a chisel, we wouldn't have gotten this one out. Man, I love it. Thank you guys all for your comments too on how to expose this beautiful stone. I'm not going to cut it because I think I would do some damage to it. For now, it's just gonna stay like this and hopefully find a nice little place on Paulie's mantle. Oh gosh, okay, that's the end of the voiceover. <laughs> Hope it wasn't too annoying um, or long-winded. Thank you for your patience. Everything that could have gone wrong in this video <laughs> did go wrong. So, I appreciate it. If you wanna see how I do the polishing and how the steps I go through, I'll put a link in the, at the end of the video and in the description for a video I did when I first tried it out. There's a few pointers in there. I'm sure I've learned a lot more since though. <laughs> I've really enjoyed that. My anxiety's gone. <laughs> oh. All right, next video, I'll be going out with Benny. Yes, he's still alive. We're gonna go check out the first place where he actually started rock counting and um, see what's there. I I'm going to go before that guy comes and gives us some much needed rain. Thank you very much. I super love doing this and I wish I could do it more. All right. Bye.